how do can people get into the ballroom scene? Mm -hmm. So I think there's many ways, connections or classes or sessions. I think to learn and research is the first thing to do. There's nowadays so much material online. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my show on Air with Ocean. We're at episode 18 now, and today I'm joined by Mother Leo Sanora. Hi, Kai. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it is so lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for coming over. Leo Sanora is the European mother of Hazel Sanora, uh, which is from the ballroom scene. So, just to let you know, today we're talking about the ballroom scene in uh, Germany and Europe and in general. Yes. <laughs> when I say pioneer, that means you are pioneer Leon Saint Laurent. That means you brought ballroom to Germany, the ballroom scene, the ballroom culture. You started dancing in Düsseldorf, uh, I, I think with hip hop, was mm -hmm. it? And then you started with voguing. But as you're the person who brought the ballroom scene to Germany, who taught you voguing? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was always into dance anyway. Um, I was more in the urban dance, uh, in the freestyle battle scene. Um, and I traveled a lot to Paris. And anyway, if you're in any kind of black urban culture, then, or at least when it comes to, to the New York black urban cultures, New York is obviously the Mecca that you want to go to, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Through my passion that I had, then an, I was lucky enough, um, I won this TV show called Dance Star. They kind of sent me to LA and I was uh -huh. like, yeah, LA is cute, but I want to go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> so I just prolonged the trip and went to New York for the first time. And that's where I met Archie Burnett, um, basically my godfather in ballroom. And um, yeah, I took his class and that's how I got to know voguing. And then he told me, okay, Voguing is part of ballroom, so check out these other events mm. uh, like Vogue Nights by Jack Maserahi. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's how I, I got to know ballroom um, in the US, basically. But in New York, especially. Yeah, in New York. Okay, especially. so you were like, yeah, like, it's cute, so I go to New York and I'll check it out there. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't know about ballroom, so I went there for the urban dance, mm. right? And through that, I got to know mm. ballroom. Dance Star was a TV show, I think, on Viva, was mm -hmm. it? Back yeah. in 2009 or 10? Uh, eight, actually. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I also still know some dancers. Now I know one more from Dance Star, but yes. <laughs> All right, so you got to know the ballroom scene in the US, but how did you bring it to Germany then? Mm -hmm. So between 2008 and 2012, um, I was just very invested in learning. So I moved to Berlin in 2009. That's why I started working as a commercial dancer. And I would basically just save all my money. <laughs> yeah, go to New York for three months to mm. actually study the, the craft, study the art, get to know the culture, get to know the people. Um, so that was like my yearly trip that I did for three months. To wow. really go there. Every year, three months. Yeah, I mean, wow. I was lucky. My best friend lived there because New York is very expensive. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's ways to survive on bagels and stuff. <laughs> so uh, I was very fortunate that my friend lived there, so I, I didn't have to pay for any rent while I was there. Yeah. So that was like my investment and in really kind of getting to know the culture. At the same time in Germany or Europe, there was kind of a movement of people getting to know voguing mm. and of more of a hip hop context. Um, and yeah, 2012, I was like, okay, that's enough. We need like our own event, our own ball, our own space for only ballroom because before it was more voguing that was incorporated as a category into hip hop events. Yeah. Yes, I still remember that uh, <laughs> when I joined some championships uh, starting in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, we were always seeing like these dance groups dancing to Beyonce, Shakira, I don't know, everyone. Mm -hmm. And then they were like throwing in a voguing beat mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, that's what we know. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, as, <laughs> as Rhea told me in this show uh, back in episode mm -hmm. two, uh, we call it noging. <laughs> or vaguing. You can choose. Are we? Or a vaguing. A vaguing. Because it's very vague. It's not vague. And there was an event a couple, a couple of weeks ago, which was also like this, yeah, a, a pride event. Mm -hmm. And they had like voguing mm -hmm. in there, like a voguing thing. 
and they spelled it wrong. That's why they I said like Wuxing. Wuxing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's not talk about this today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole episode. Yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. Um, so you got to know the culture and then you started teaching the first dance classes. You just reached out to some dance studios and were like, hey, I know a lot about that. Um, can I teach that or how did that start then? Well, it wasn't really that I knew a lot about it, but I knew the base about yeah. it <laughs> and I knew more than anybody else in Germany because yeah. I, I had the privilege to travel to the US plus take a lot of workshops in Paris because there was also a lot of events like just a boo or who is who and during that time um, there was one organizer called Ananique. She always did like a one week intensive workshop with all kinds of urban styles and she was actually the one to bring Benny or Javi, Javier Benny or Javier Ninja or Archie Burnett Ninja uh, to Paris. So mm. it was like a one week workshop. So yeah, um, yeah I just had the, the most experience at that time in this country. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, okay, in order to build, I need to teach. So I just reached out um, actually to a, a friend. It was a yoga studio mm -hmm. at first that I taught the first workshops. Uh, until 2012 Motions Dance Studio opened mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know the owner from Motions from dancing because she also used to dance. So yeah. We had a few jobs together. They all dance. And they someone. all dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I asked her if she, if she would want to offer that space for voguing and for ballroom and since then they've been super super supportive also through the voguing festivals to offer space uh, even for free if I could not pay for it. Mm. So they were just very um, supportive and yeah. And yeah, so people, there were other people in Europe, but we would all kind of travel to the same place yeah. and meet. And obviously when social media popped a bit more and YouTube and internet and smartphones and all of that, yeah. <laughs> especially in 2013, the video from Lysandra versus Inksy at Street Star went just viral. All right. So I think all of this, plus the classes that I was offering and the first voguing festival in Germany or ballroom festival, which happened in 2012. Mm. So I think all of these factors together just spread the word of ballroom or voguing and there was more people interested. The Tanzas NRV in Düsseldorf was oh, a yes, very important place. It started with funk and styles and I also grew up in the Tanzas as a kid. Mm. Um, so the connection was there and we also did our own events um, there, could invite people for workshops. Um, yeah, so I think all of that combined effort, spaces and the things that I organized or we organized as House of Melody back then. Yes. Um, kind of offered the beginning platform to start Ballroom in Germany. Yeah. Um, house of Melody, speaking of, uh, you founded the house mm -hmm. in? 2012. 2012. Yes. And this House of Melody is not there anymore. Do we say this like this? Yeah, it so closed. It, Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> the house closed. The house closed. <laughs> the house closed. And the house, like the members, most of them did go to House of Saint Laurent. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did yeah. that come? So um, yeah, House of Melody was the first German ballroom house and there's only very few European ballroom houses. Most houses are chapters that belong to American house. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, in 2019 it felt like um, for us that we just wanted to transition into the next step. Uh, there was a lot of changes within the house, so a lot of members left also already Melody mm. to go their own way in ballroom and that are still very active in ballroom. Yeah. And also one of our very uh, close members of the House of Melody passed away in 2018. So it just felt like, um, you know, kind of rising like a phoenix from the ashes to, mm. to restart something. Yeah. And Wanalor, who is my mentor in ballroom and a very important, iconic ballroom DJ, he is basically part of the House of Lore and Saint Laurent because a lot of people, yeah, that's his connection to ballroom. So I called him and I was like, okay, you know, we're going to either change the house name <laughs> and be a different house or we're going to join an American house. And I said, obviously, it's going to be one of the houses that he was in. Yes. You know, because he's like Allure my Saint father. Laurent, yeah. yeah. And yeah, his advice was to go to Saint Laurent. Yeah. He said that would be, be the fit for us. And yeah, he was definitely right. So good. So he connected all of that. And so family connected to another family and yeah. the family grew. It's a kiki scene and the major scene and there's in every scene different houses. But why is it happening that people are moving from one house to another? Mm. I think it's just part of ballroom, part of humans, part of nature, right? We all evolve, we all change. 
in some way or another mm. or some people don't change also maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's always been in the history of ballroom there are certain houses maybe there's a group from a house that feels they want to start something else yes. they want to be a leader themselves and maybe in the house they don't have the chance I mean, there can be a million reasons, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but it's very normal that people leave a house and a group founds a new house. Some houses are more focused on family values, maybe other houses are maybe more focused on only walking balls and slaying. Other houses have maybe 500 members, other houses maybe 100. <laughs> you know, so it's very individual to see yes. what you want in this scene or from totally. ballroom. The main uh, difference between major house and kiki house is more or less like the, the experience uh, of being in the ballroom scene or how can we sum it up? Mm, well actually traditionally in the US the why it was founded was mainly to educate the youth and to give the youth, especially LGBTQ youth, talking about black and Latinx uh, youth, a space where they could um, exchange and also talk about really serious issues that the community has as such, maybe HIV uh, protection, how to protect yourself properly, yes. um, PrEP, other health issues, mental health issues, you know, everything where people, young people can easily get into mm. and there's kind of a, a guidance missing or a space to also exchange about that. Yes. So that was actually the main intention for the scene and it was born more from youth centers, from LGBTQ youth centers that would throw functions. Uh, so in America, not everybody that's in the kiki scene is in the major scene mm. and not everybody that's in the major scene is in the kiki scene yes. and it's really more orientated around these lines of necessity for the youth. In Europe, I would say it's a bit more, I guess, just an easier way, a more fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, because a lot of people are intimidated by the major scene, which I get, that's understandable. Um, but the I, pressure. The pressure. <laughs> uh, but I feel at this point, um, you can also see in the kiki scene, there's a level. It's not like everybody walking is a baby. Yeah, yeah right? totally. All of the other aspects, I feel like we don't really consider as part of the kiki scene, this educational part, or maybe not as a focus. Uh, so I feel like in Germany or in Europe it's a bit of a different intention because it's more of a young, new people in the scene to kind of gather their experience mm. and new doesn't have to be young, yeah. right? Also to of understand course. that. Yeah. So in America it's really more young youth. Yeah. Mm. Um, so me personally I wish also the kiki scene could be more like that <laughs> in Europe. and um, Educational. Educational, but also I guess to find um, when, also what position can you take in the kiki scene when you're already established in the major scene. Yes. If you're already in a major house, should I be still walking in the kiki scene? Yeah, or should just... I be walking the same categories because yes. I already know I can slay those, I don't need to yes. practice. Um, or can I maybe open up my own kiki house and really pull in young talent? Um, how do I want this young talent to look? Do I want to focus maybe on trans identities, on POC identities? Um, so I feel like there's a lot of room for the kiki scene to, to grow into that. Um, and especially because in the kiki scene, like 99% of the people are in the house. That's the scene that's more hype because people feel like they have a status, they feel like they have a support, <laughs> they have a name. Whereas in the major scene, they maybe feel like they don't have that yet. Mm. So I guess that's why it's also more active. Um, Plus the fact that everybody's only throwing kiki balls, so... But you can also walk a ball without being in a house. Yeah, for sure. That. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How important is it to show the ballroom culture on television? I think that's a tricky question because I guess in general the question is should underground cultures be represented in a mainstream platform? Or what are the positive and negative things about that? Just mainly that. For me, at the beginning of the journey of Barroom in Germany, I just used it as a tool for people to know that I'm here, that Barroom is here, <laughs> or to know what voguing is. So yes. I felt like in 2013 or 14, it really helped because there was people like, yeah, I saw you on TV, and then I Googled that, and then I found so much more. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it can just be a medium, at least for me, of just reaching the people that might feel alone somewhere sitting little village somewhere in Germany <laughs> yeah and that are like I, I don't I feel like I'm alone in in this world yeah but then no you find ballroom you're like okay there's a place for me there's a choice for me a um, place to, to really find your identity so I feel like that's at least how I use the the commercial media mm. especially at the beginning of the ballroom 
journey in Germany and now I'm definitely also more critical about it even when it comes to articles because I already have so many articles and every time it's like oh my god it's new tell us about <laughs> it and it's like okay I can send you like 20 links of the same article already <laughs> since 2012 but it's definitely getting better because the focus is shifting from Madonna Madonna's kids in Germany mm -hmm. voguing to okay what is ballroom what, yes. where does it come from it comes from oppression it comes from a struggle it is connected to a political issue uh, and to discrimination yeah so I feel like this is good about the media coverage that now more than oh they all dress up really fab and in high heels <laughs> ooh which you probably know from drag also it's always like oh my god it's Somehow. only fun you know <laughs> uh, to then be like no okay it is actually something serious also serious totally every time when when there's a ball there's at least one or two people like going on on the ballroom floor and not respecting anything of that yeah and how can we prevent that a little bit for example there was a time where we had a venue called san georg unfortunately the club does not exist yes, anymore I remember the time. but it was a really great venue because they offered us a thursday evening basically for free obviously and then they were like, but it has to be like a private event. <laughs> we're like, okay, we can do that. So basically it was only people that were walking and registered that could enter. There was no official Facebook event, no Instagram fly, where it was like a private yes. event with really only invited people. And everybody could bring like a plus one. Because that's usually the fact people want to bring their friends. And if they're friends, then most probably they already know a bit about ballroom because their friend is interested yeah. in ballroom, um, you know, so. So things like that can assure that a ball is at least filled with people that understand the culture. Mm. Um, or you could be like, okay, it's only ballroom community, so it's only people walking. Usually in the US it's like that. There's not like a whole amount of audience that yeah. goes there, you know, it's just, just community. people walking. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way, obviously, also the MC or the host can check people on the mic. And for me, because I also host my events, I do feel that's my responsibility, especially if I'm in a space where I know there's a lot of people that don't know about ballroom. I really try to take time to explain certain things that actually you shouldn't need to explain at a ball because yes. everybody knows the deal. Um, but usually in, in Germany it's not like that. There's always audience so I feel that's important also from the host, the organizer or the MC to take extra precaution. Maybe even call people out, read them on the mic in front of the full room how it's supposed to be how it's supposed <laughs> to be yeah to make sure that people understand yeah you're welcome to watch but this is our space you're only a guest so sit back and yes respect that yes yeah and also very important obviously um also again in the hands of the organizer is to check for the right security people because yeah every club and every ball has security but yeah. if the security itself is super critical and cringy then yeah, that's also a problem. So. And people not getting in from the ballroom scene, like, yeah, we, we had that conversation. Yeah, also <laughs> that. <laughs> so how it is now for people who haven't been to a ball and they don't want to have this, sorry, was my first time at a ball uh, moment. So how do can people get into the ballroom scene? Mm -hmm. So I think there's many ways because you can find connections or classes or sessions. There's like um, several Facebook groups or Instagram pages that you can check out. Um, so I feel like if you have interest, it's always good to reach out to people uh, or to meet the people at the places that we meet, maybe at a ball or maybe at a studio. And yeah, I guess to observe, to learn. I think to learn and research is the first thing to do. And there's nowadays so much material online, <laughs> um, but please always put ballroom, the word ballroom into it, because if you only Google how to Vogue, that there's no tutorial from ballroom that says how to Vogue. <laughs> Maybe one, but 99% of them are vague. Uh, but I think that's important to understand that there is a mastery, there's a craft behind it, there's a culture, there's a heritage behind ballroom. And all of this has to be learned first. I, yeah. I always tell people, yeah, what, you want to jump into a breakdance battle or a gymnastic battle? And they're like, no, of course not. And I'm like, yeah, why would you jump into a ball then? It's the same yeah. thing, even if it's only <laughs> one way and you only have to walk back and forth, it's still a lot of um, a lot behind it. You still have to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. like, you just kind of walk. Yeah. Of course, you can, but you get shot properly. Yeah, get shot, <laughs> for sure. <laughs>
Last but not least, I want to uh, tell you how you can support a ballroom scene without walking at a ball, maybe. Maybe you say like, hey, I'm always going to a ball and I love it, I don't want to walk. My ballroom is rooted in um, a struggle mainly from Black, Latinx, LGBTQI people, mainly from trans women or people of trans identity. So I feel like it's also very important to be an ally or be a fan outside a ballroom. So, you know, educate other people that might be ignorant or discriminating. Don't be discriminating yourself, because just because you come to a ball and pay the entrance, and then on the next corner you might respect disrespect one of my <laughs> sisters, you know, that's not, that's not. You're probably not welcome at the ball again. You're probably not. <laughs> so I feel like that's a super important aspect to always check your privileges and see what can I do outside of ballroom because ballroom was created because the real world is shit, basically, yeah, for certain people. And so I think that's important to keep in mind that it's also about what do you do outside of ballroom. If there's a conversation that's super offensive or super homophobic, step in and be like, hey, no, I don't see it like this, you know, yeah. or you shouldn't say that. So that's one part. Um, a lot of times we have GoFundMe's or fundraisers, either for people in the community that have needs, um, that might be looking for apartments. So if you have a friend that has a cute apartment for a BIPOC queer body, you know, uh, things like this. Um, but I guess in general to just be more active about especially LGBTQ rights and especially mm. when it comes to people of color that are in this community. Yeah. I have to mention Queer Trans Liberation again uh, because we just found it like to found it. Um, created two accounts, uh, Queer Trans Jobs and Queer Trans Housing, which is specifically for queer and trans ident people. So check these out also um, if you are looking for something right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just do mention it one time. So I just want to say because there's a really dope project starting now by a collective called Shapes and Shades. Um, they're mainly in NRV, the Zoe, Ray, Milan and Brie Prodigy. Um, plus other three members from a collective called the Schwarze Haus. So they are um, doing actually weekly ballroom sessions, maybe workshops, maybe panels, uh, maybe mini balls, so to say, and it's all for free. And there's also ways to join online. So definitely check Shapes and Shades, because uh, there's a lot of useful information also on backgrounds. Um, the next workshop I think is with Typhoon chanting. Mm. So also super interesting. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share this because it's um, yeah, online but also locally based in NRV in Düsseldorf. Yeah, you can also check out the five elements exactly. uh, on Instagram. Follow Leo on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Follow Tammy up. Uh, subscribe to this channel, and we're gonna see us in the next episode, episode 19 then. Or on a drink with ocean is uh, also online now. So many shows. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>